Okay, so the first step, get everything off the uh, rocker cover, all the brackets, the wiring, the looms, etc. Uh, get the rocker cover off, get access to the cams. Uh, just keep notes of everything and then uh, move on to the next step. Okay, after about uh, five hours, maybe four hours, this is where you should be. Uh, upper case off, everything off on the side, uh, lower case off, Let's see in the bottom, lower case completely off, uh, engine supported, bottle jack, so what will happen now is time it, Get all the reference chain marks lined up and then uh, go about disassembling the top right so probably one of the hardest jobs is uh, the bolt for the crank pulley it's just massively tight so don't try and fuck around with uh, impact wrenches and all that get yourself a proper a pulley reaction tool like i've got there going on the ground and build yourself an extension out with a proper support and get a proper lever arm otherwise it will end in tears so i've got mine off i almost rounded it initially it was a bit nerve-wracking but uh, all good she's loose right so all the cam uh, bearings and saddles uh, everything's off so this next step get some rope put this put that cylinder first cylinder to the bottom and then feed in into the cylinder as much rope as it will take right so cylinder number one springs are off see the strings in there jammed up the parallels are pretty much held back just a little bit of movement in them which uh, we'll see I'll try and work with that compressed air will probably be better but and this was the overhead uh, valve spring compressor that's been used with the modified arms fit in. Without the modification you'll damage the stem seals which I've done on one of them so I'll have to change them but uh, yeah, other than that I'm going to stop for parts and uh, get all the bits I need and just crack on do the springs one cylinder per time so now all the cams are ready to come out. You see in that cam. On the exhaust cam, I've done it with uh, the vacuum pump still connected. You can do it, it's a bit tricky. You just have to pull, you have to work it out with that. But it means you can leave all the vacuum pump connected. So once the timing chain's off, take the timing tensioner rails out. Time it up as per the manual. Marks on top, mark on bottom. The coloured links don't match up to where you think they should be, but just do it. Then uh, pull the VVT hubs off, three bolts. Be very careful with these, these oil control, these spool valves in the middle are just loose. Don't drop them, don't get them dirty. Three bolts, uh, VVT comes straight off, no need to lock or do any of that stuff. Just unbolt them. So this is where the cam gears are, according to the disassembly instructions. Notches here and here line up with the notches on the cap. Cams look to be somewhere, I guess, uh, the bottom of the inlet, which is a bit strange, but what it says and then underneath that uh, is where things are so I've got uh, one uh, spring on there on the right and I'm just doing one on the left here on the exhaust side very very tricky very tricky the collets are so freaking tiny um, 
And I've had to hack a number of different tools to get this to work. And there's all kinds of drop potential in the uh, oil drainage passageways, etc. So you just have to take your time. Um, be surgical with this shit because uh, otherwise it's not going to go well. But uh, so one in, second one going in. Just going to wait for some new valve stem seals because these are buggered on the front. It's one of the tools I used, uh, reached in too far. Then just slowly work my way down. Right, so cylinder number two springs are all on. See, the number one springs are on. Again, uh, rope in the cylinder, bring it up to TDC, jam the valves, take them off, take the old ones off, take them, put the new ones on. You need to uh, play around with all your valve, overhead valve tools to make them work properly. Take your time and then, uh, yeah, just number three left. So this is the last of the spring collets going on. All done. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just loosening. Springs compressed. Collets are pushed in. And then I uh, basically will just loosen the overhead compressor carefully. The biggest risk here is that the fingers let go and the whole thing just uh, jumps off before you have a chance to get the collets in. But thankfully, Thankfully they're all done now. All the springs are in. Beautiful. Uh, Bastardise this thing massively to make it work. See the cases, the case uh, interfaces are all cleaned up, ready for the case covers. Okay, installation timing marks, pink links, slots on the hub assemblies lined up with the caps. You can see the lowercase oil pump in the bottom, oil pump drive, that's the top case. Right, crank hub bolt tightening. You can't fuck around with this, really. Use a proper three quarter inch, very, very fat drive, proper reaction tool. Get your support proper. Use a massive torque wrench. That torque wrench there I used for my GT3 center lock wheels. I had to buy some of these three quarter inch extensions, but uh, well worth it. Okay. Oil pressure's good. Uh, let's have a look. Cyvex. Everything's happy. Not lumpy at all. Lambda multipliers are a little rich. You can see it's putting in, uh, it's pulling out point, multiplying the fuel by point 0.8. Anyway, I'll get it all set up. Um, yeah, very much looking forward to this. Should really sort the car out. Also, I've got. Uh, uh, Cybex mini dash here. I can switch through to lots of different displays. See um, injectors. It's also got a hundred hertz GPS, long lap, speed, yaw, you name it. Uh, ethanol in here as well, 9.2% at the moment. It's got uh, live graphs. The other thing about Cyvex is, it's like, you start the car and you just you just drive it. You don't get any of the crap from uh, the standard Toyota shit. You just basically start the car up and drive it, you know, and that's it. 
you don't get any lane change warnings you don't get any of that crap this is how the car looks and your maps you just toggle your cruise control up and down and it flicks in the maps as you want got a map to some really I can't even remember I've got six or seven maps for all different things traction and everything um, so yeah you know if you're thinking about getting a standalone get the get the best you can get the Cyvex is just the dog's bollocks I mean the cars transformed with it basically uh, no dash errors no thingy no bullshit going on when you start the car cruise control still works but it's not radar uh, your blind spot mirrors still work which is cool so everything I want on the car is still there and all the crap that I don't isn't I've also got the four-wheel drive controller in this car and you can see here I've got down here I've, I'm look, I can monitor uh, let's get the focus all-wheel drive duty cycle all-wheel drive temperature um, and you can connect to that unit and do all kinds of cool stuff with it right so subsequent to getting the car running had a bit of a problem where the exhaust cam wouldn't respond to uh, asking it to move so if you put a command in the Cyvex, it would just wind up the integral proportion of max out and cams would stay still. So I'm just having a look. And I think what's happened is, uh, you can see the tab on the spool. I must have tightened this cam on there with that spool not properly sitting. So the tab looks like to me anyway, hasn't been uh, captured under, you see that? Let me just zoom out the lower left nut, just under the washer of it, there's a little tab. That spool valve is supposed to be captive in there, and it wasn't. So I'm just wondering, uh, I'm going to try and take that bolt out, put the valve back in, clean it out, see if it works. But just be careful when you bolt these things together, because uh, just minor things like that can uh, cause a problem. So. Let's see, let's see if that works. Problem solved. So yes, the uh, little spool valves in the end of the cams, there's a real detail, uh, just a real minor uh, overlap of the washer, one of the three nuts, one of the three cap screws that hold a VVT hub onto the end of the cam. One of them also just reaches over and holds that spool valve in. And I made the mistake of sliding that valve in after the cams were made up because I took it out to clean it and it didn't work. So I've uh, disassembled it, inspected it with a camera and uh, that was the only discrepancy I could see with the inlet and outlet was that on the inlet, that little spool valve couldn't be pulled out but on the exhaust, I just pulled it out with my fingers. So here we are in the car, you can see the exhaust closed loop variable valve times in, in, is in yellow and the inlet is in blue and you can see now on this long trace here live trace when I, when I rev the car the inlets uh, advancing the exhaust cam is retarding and it's doing exactly what it should I also played around with the latch points and the offsets because I thought it might be that and the car really didn't like it so if you've got a Cyvex, keep the base map and then you can paste cal critical stuff back in. But yeah, now it's it's beautiful. The integral's not winding up. Um, it's tracking the target very nicely as I, as I rev the car. No instability. It stays in closed loop all the way back down to idle. Pretty happy with that. 